Trust everybody's at speed and ready to rock and roll. Are you good over here, 14? Or is that CCB? CCB. All right, we're going to get going. So I uh, wanted to get everyone together uh, this afternoon to discuss some important internal department updates following the in-custody death of uh, Harold Easter. I'm sure all of us are well-versed in some of the circumstances, that uh, tragic circumstances that developed uh, several weeks ago. Uh, not lost on us that it's a extremely busy news day today. In fact, we just got off the phone with one of the news directors saying, you, you, you know, you're killing us. We have the president in town. We're still recovering from this weather from, uh, from overnight. Uh, we understand all that. We appreciate all that. Uh, we made a promise, though, at the onset of this that uh, when there were some developments that we could discuss, uh, we had a responsibility to discuss those developments, and, and we do have some developments that we want to outline uh, this afternoon. Nothing to do with the investigation, the criminal investigation. We know that that is being managed and led by the State Bureau of Investigation. That's their lane. That's not our lane. We're not going to go anywhere near the evidence or the investigation itself. Uh, there's some other areas that uh, Chief Putney wants to discuss concerning some policy updates uh, following that tragic incident, and I'd like to introduce Chief Putney. Just uh, to jump right into it, um, you know, as an organization, we value the sanctity of human life. So any loss of life, we know, deserves a great deal of scrutiny. And uh, this case in particular is no, no different. Um, I've had a conversation with the Easter family because as our protocol, we allow for them to review any video relevant to the incident, the incident that uh, we captured on, the, on Mr. Easter's, uh, Mr., Mr. Uh, Easter's death. So that's being uh, set for sometime, hopefully next week. But in the interim, I couldn't wait. There were some issues that we could address immediately, um, and so we're doing so. Uh, truthfully, though, um, there are lots of questions. You know, the Easter family has questions, uh, the community has questions, and so do I. Um, two in particular, two in particular, one of which I can answer, which is why we're talking today around policy, but the other, is specific to the initial contact that happened over in Metro Division. That question is going to remain unsolved for a while, just to be quite frank with you. Um, people are asking me what was the context um, of the stop, and I told you we, we put out it was around um, drug investigation. Um, there are questions about um, what is the medical emergency. That I can't speak to just yet. Uh, that's relevant to that first question that I keep talking about which is the incident itself that happened at the initial contact. People are asking, uh, did we need to call medic at that scene? Again, uh, that's a question that I have that is going to come out of the criminal investigation. And here's the thing. i got to thread this needle, y'all. Uh, I cannot jeopardize either of the investigations. As you know, um, we have confidence in the State Bureau of Investigation to do this thorough criminal investigation. That's going to give us more insight and information around the initial contact. Uh, the piece that I can talk about and the question that I can answer, which is what we're addressing today, is the policy specific to um, continual observation, continual observation. Our policies, and there are a number of disparate 
pieces that connect to that topic in various policies. I think up to five different policies speak to that. One of which is I have an encounter anywhere in the field and, and it's a, a custodial encounter. Maybe I'm going to arrest someone. The other is transporting that arrestee. And lastly, um, managing the observation of, of an arrestee in one of our interview rooms. What we're doing is clarifying. Our officers deserve clarity. Right now, because of the way the policies are structured, uh, it's a bit too complex for practical application by our troops. So today, what we're doing is clarifying. We have to. We owe it to our officers, and we owe, owe it to our community, to be quite honest with you. So from now on, the, anytime we have custody, which is somebody in our care and control, not just suspects or arrestees, but also witnesses, also victims of crime. We take custody, we transport people for various reasons to conduct investigations, but all of them deserve the same care while they're in our custody. And our policy is gonna be that specific. So from now on, from initial contact, when we get custody and control of anyone, be it a suspect, victim, or witness, we have to ensure that that due care is taken. And that means we're in constant or at least continual observation of those people. What I mean by that is pretty simple. In person, um, physically I'm, I'm watching you, or by video surveillance I'm watching you, especially when it involves your presence in one of our interview rooms. So again, that is the big change that's, that we're making today. We've got to educate our people and train them. We're going to have some online training that accompanies this uh, directive. And we have to simplify it because right now what we see are specific pieces of this, of this um, directive that is across multiple policies that make it a bit too complex to, to readily apply. Again, um, thoughts and prayers go out to the Easter family. Um, my concern with the officers, they too have due process and we got to ensure that by maintaining the integrity of the investigation that's being conducted by the State Bureau of Investigations, which will be followed by our internal affairs investigation. What are your questions? Chief, um, can you kind of maybe explain a little bit more how it has been done in the past? I mean, would it be uh, permissible, for example, for someone to uh, be in your care and control and, sure. and, and maybe somebody's in the next room, but maybe sure. they're not looking at it? Very good question, Glenn. So uh, that's the crux of the matter. Um, when I'm in control of you on a scene, I'm, I'm, you're in my custody, I'm going to constantly monitor you, right? When you get into an interview room, um, we have searched you. We're sure you don't have any contraband on you. At that point, policy used to be every 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to tell you, um, I get it. It makes sense, but it's not good enough. Uh, we want continual observation. Either I'm looking at you physically or I'm watching you through a video to make sure if anything happens, I can immediately respond. Um, sorry, you go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so, so uh, I'm a little bit reminded of uh, the situation with Derek Pierce Franklin where uh, I know your department ruled this shooting justified, but a lot of people were appalled uh, that the officers did not immediately render aid to him. And then this is another situation where someone is having a medical emergency and there's questions about when that aid is rendered. Sure. At a certain point, it's not a policy question, but maybe more of a compassion question? Uh, very good. I think they're one and the same. Um, we value the sanctity of life that shows empathy and compassion. Our policies reflect that. That's the preamble to the policy itself. So what I can tell you is the difference is the nuances being I'm engaged with you uh, in a detention physically out on the street versus you being in, a, in an interview room. We want to make it clear throughout. It's, it, it's irrelevant what your location is. Our policy moving forward is we maintain observation consistently. As far as rendering aid, as soon as we know you need it, we render it. That's what the policy dictates. We got to make sure that that always happens. That's the other piece of it. That's why there's a dual investigation to make sure that anytime we have knowledge that there's an issue, that we need to get medical attention for, we do so. So both of those are, in, are going to be a part of the investigation itself. That's what's going to be brought to light. Um, and I am encouraged to see when they were acutely aware that there was a medical condition, uh, they did everything in their power to render aid. 
Following the decision from the Citizens Review Board, is the department considering changing its decision? On? On the shooting of Dan Quiris Franklin? Again, um, I'm not going to respond without information. Uh, all I know is th their vote and the outcome of the vote, uh, generally what happens is they explain what they're thinking, uh, and then they give recommendations along with their, um, what they're thinking, so to give me fuller context. I don't have that context. I put a lot of effort in building a relationship. So I hope that um, the same courtesy, care, and professionalism is going to be uh, mutual. So I have yet to see them. I'm not going to comment until I do, but I am aware of their, their um, uh, vote. Yes. How much weight does but does that change what we're doing? No. I haven't seen anything yet, so there's nothing to change at this point. Yes, sir. I was going to say, how much weight will their recommendations have with you? Depends on what the recommendations are. I've uh, heeded quite a few of them. You know, we just redid the whole response to resistance policy. And a lot of the reason is because of the feedback and recommendations we got that were reasonable, that were logical, that made sense, that spoke to the empathy we talked about before, and um, that I think make us better. Those recommendations we're always open to, and they had a huge impact in us redoing that response to resistance policy already. I think the uh, work speaks for itself. It does matter when it's things that we can accomplish and they're reasonable, logical, and applicable. When it, when it comes to the policy that, that did exist, they are now updating. So 15 minutes is about the time when someone's in detention to check on them, right? In the, an interview room, yes. Okay. Do we have, can you say at this point whether officers were following that policy accurately and closely in this situation? What I can tell you is that is a part of the internal investigation. That is a policy consideration. And without having a board getting all the facts, I can't speak to that today, no. But I can tell you that's one of the two points that are being investigated that you will get further information on after those investigations are complete. Anecdotally, do you know or have you heard if officers are following that carefully? Because obviously sure. sometimes policies can be policies and actions can be something different. Here's what I'll tell you. I'm blessed to have been a cop back when I was on the street because um, I can tell you I never started a stopwatch. I wasn't that specific. We generally would check on them. And, and I can tell you that's kind of our practice. I don't know that it is a 15-minute cutoff and there's a buzzer that goes off. I don't, none of our officers are equipped that way. It's just kind of common sense that you check on them periodically. Uh, I'm telling you, for me, common sense is great. But when we're talking compassion and empathy, when we're talking the right thing, I want consistent. I want continual observation throughout. So there's no need to have a minute or a time stamp. It is you're doing it the whole time. And that gives our officers some cover and some, some uh, clear direction. And it gives the community that same level of, of encouragement. Under the old policy, uh, would the circumstances dictate how often you checked on someone? For example, if you had someone in custody and it appeared that they might be on something, that you would, you know, instead of doing it 15 minutes, maybe you look all the time. Well, the policy is uh, pretty clear. If you feel somebody's ingested something that could harm them, we immediately get medic, right? And again, that's one of the questions that the investigation has to um, un unveil, uh, reveal. So that is already clear. What was not clear is how it transitions from me encountering you on the street to transporting you and then to having you in an interview room. So now it's very consistent. It's continual observation while I'm in contact on the street, while I'm transporting, and while I have you in the interview room. That's the whole point. We simplified it so that our officers clearly know the expectations, and they're much easier to meet. Under the previous policy, are those check-ins done in person? Are they done over video? Sort of what, what exactly is check-in? It was, it was person. You know, you'd open the door, you'd look in, make sure they're okay, and close the door. And it was every 15 minutes. But again, that was the goal. Um, this is clearer. The goal is pretty concise and specific. We always will observe moving forward. And it's hopefully through video, I'm assuming. Both. Uh, and okay. the reason we say both is in person. But when I'm, if I just arrested you, you might be upset about it. Everybody doesn't uh, like to be arrested, obviously. So if you're irate, I can take you to the interview room, close the door, and let it, let it de-escalate. But I can still visually see you through video. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Instead of being face-to-face -face and continuing to have that that contention, that tension between us.
Do you, do you know if the sorry? Do you yes, know sir. if the previous policy was brought on by any uh, previous incidents? I'm reading here about a, a teen who injured himself back in 2012 or 11 in a in police cruiser. Was was the current policy a reflection of what happened in that situation? Do you know? What I'll tell you is I don't know specifically, but um, we used to say every policy has a, an incident attached. So what we do is we would clear up any confusion around that specific incident, meaning transport. What we did this time is step back and said, hey, what is our real goal? Our real goal is to achieve what we talk about when we say um, preservation of life and maintaining the sanctity of life. So the only way to do that is holistically looking at what we really want to accomplish, which is I'm constantly observing you in this continual throughout our contact. Right. So. I, I can't say specifically that that was the cause, but most likely it was how we shorted it up. And every three years we review them anyway, so I couldn't tell you specifically to date. But that's generally how it happened. This time, though, we want to make it so it, it's consistent throughout all of our policies. And how do you plan to implement this new policy? Is it just effective now? It is. It's pretty quick. Uh, we'll put it on their learning plan, and then they just have to come on. But as of today, today is the time stamp. We're going to. Make sure everybody's aware starting today how we move forward and the language goes out to everybody today. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.